Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a video about the N1 implant, and of course with the N1 base, which is the restorative base that you use at the time of surgery to place. Then you come back and to do an N1 angulated screw channel crown, showed here with the screw. And so this is a fantastic system. We're gonna show you a case and how I use this with the new anatomic healing abutment and how this all works together. Looking at the DTX Studio plan, which is the software from Nobel BioCare, we can see that there's a problem with the emergence profile of the 2-1 and the 1-1, one one, so or 8 and 9 in the US. Looking at this, you can see where we got the case at the end, and I'll show you a little bit about how the prosthetics work, because uh, this M1 Nobel BioCare implant is usually performing very well at creating soft tissue and holding the tissue. So the eight and nine are having a problem here. The nine is coming out. So we're planning the implant and we actually uh, did uh, submerge this implant, some bone grafting, let the tissue heal over top of this, then came back and placed an anatomic abutment. And I'm gonna show you how this looks and how this works. And this is an anatomic abutment that was just created not too long ago. So you can see the implant was positioned right here, which gives us some jump gap grafting and also letting the soft tissue come forward. And we, we covered the soft tissue uh, and, and brought it down a little bit too. So no extra tissue added on this case other than the bone grafting, which was um, some allograft. So here's the abutment. You can see the anatomic abutment is quite wide and it's a lot wider than the implant. And this allows us to create the emergence profile that's needed to do this uh, restoration. The bone is up over the platform on this, and so you can see very amazing healing. And when we take the anatomic healing abutment off, you'll see the emergence profile. So looking down in here, you can see the junctional epithelium. The connective tissue is covered over, but we've got the implant, then the uh, base level abutment, and then the anatomic abutment. So when you come to do the crown, the emergence profile is preset by the anatomic abutment. And uh, we're gonna wait to the end to show you what we do on this case because I did a little restoration on the eight or the number one one. So we used an OmniGrip mini screwdriver which comes with the Nobel system from the N1 kit. And we're placing this uh, implant crown. So I'm just gonna hand tighten this down and get it into position. And I'm gonna do a little bit of work. So this is an N1 ASC crown or angulated screw channel. So my favorite way to restore this implant is with the base and then have an angulated screw channel on top. Just trust me, do it that way. And you don't need to go to the implant level. This costs less to do it this way as well, which is always a good thing because you're not putting a base level, uh, you know, titanium abutment in there and there's no glue in this either, so no cement. So you can see one crown is larger than the other. We've planned the crown space based on our emergence profile created in DTX. So I'm gonna come back and use some restoration now to create the emergence profile. And hopefully the patient will then get a crown done on this uh, one one or number eight, because this is the ideal thing, but he can't afford that right now. So we're gonna just doctor this up and make this look better. So we're gonna use some Filtech Universal restorative material to fill the actual tooth itself. And then in the back, we're gonna put some bulk fill, which is the green. It's not actually green, but it's in, in a green packaging. So our goal, we built the emergence profile a little bit, and I realized that I'm gonna take the emergence profile up a little bit on the zenith. So I'm using my BioLase laser. And I'm gonna shape the tissue, making sure that I keep at least one millimeter of sulcus. And so I'll come across here and do the emergence profile to match my implant system. And you can see we start to get the zenith to be in the distal one third and allows me to get some beautiful soft tissue look to this. And it creates a balance, even though this guy has a low lip line, it's just an easy procedure. He's gonna get that crown, as I said, that um, he'll have a crown done hopefully in the future. But we're able to change the color to match the color of the original uh, crown that we fabricated. We had the emergence profile done. Then I'll use some Scotch Bond Universal Plus and do some bonding on the root and we'll then add some more resin in this area to create the emergence profile that we need to make it match the implant crown. 
So this is all pre-done and pre-ordained. So we were going to try to match the crown. So we create the crown and DTX implant. And so then we're able to come back and do the restorative material. But basically, we're putting the implant underneath where we want the emergence to be. And then I built the emergence on the number eight or the one one to match. So it's just a little sneaky way of doing a little bit of a reverse because we know that the the soft tissues and uh, such will then be very similar, not perfect, but hopefully this guy will do a crown and uh, then we'll be able to fix that even to a higher level of success. We know the shade of the original uh, implant crown, so I do a some type of crown that's full contour zirconia on the 1-1 one one, uh, later on. So you can see it's starting to look a little bit better and we get a better look to the restoration. Then we'll do some polishing and, and fill it and make it so that it's going to be something that he's proud to have in his mouth. He did have that problem. He didn't even realize that his tooth was so large on the 2-1 in the width point. But once we make the width the same using the DTX planning software, then it's just a matter of making the filling to come out and do that. So it's a, a simple way to do it. And you'll see that uh, we're almost done here. So it wasn't a very long procedure to do this restoration. We'll bring him back after a little bit and I can then put the uh, restoration and give it more polish, but we'll just get this to a point where He's going to be happy with it at this uh, level. So it's already looking quite a bit nicer from the height of the zenith and the spacing. And uh, we were able to use uh, the setup in DTX to do that. So we'll do a little bit of polishing with the Softlex disc. And I like these. Um, they're able to go in and get a fairly nice smooth surface. And this will allow us to have uh, a better feel to, to the patient and make it so it's uh, aesthetic. We'll come back in with the red stripe diamond and just do a little bit more smoothing and then go back to the Softlex disc. Now, it's important not to forget about tightening down the implant crown. We're gonna go back in with the OmniGrip Mini Driver and tighten this down to 20 Newton centimeters, which is the manufacturer's recommended torque. This is gonna stretch the screw a little bit, put the crown into the final tightening position. If I wanted to, I could take it off and do some polishing into proximally, but uh, then we'll put our restoration in. You can look down inside, there's the screw, there's the angulated channel and making everything into a beautiful system. So we're gonna put some Teflon that's sterile into the uh, screw chamber to prevent resin going into the uh, screw itself because we want to maybe take this off at some point in the future so we want to make sure that that is protected so once we do this we're going to come in and then we'll put some material inside and uh, this is our bulk fill so i like the bulk fill because it's not as uh, wear so it's kind of wear resistant plus i can put in up to four millimeters and cure even though that's not the case here but it's a great material to put inside of your implant channels and to seal off the implant because I think that it stands uh, a little bit longer. I don't have research on that, but it tends to resist the forces of occlusion and such and um, with food going up in that area as well. So you can see how much nicer the area looks now for the patient. And um, you know, it's not perfect, but uh, it's not too bad. And this is what the patient wants. And so with his lip down, it's, it's actually quite nice. And you can see that he's gonna be happy to get out of my office. So that's the N1 implant. We did the anatomic abutment, which is allowing you to get an emergence profile. And so this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a video about the N1 implant.